Church, it is uh, so good to be going from 2020 to 2021. Uh, it's, it's so good to leave uh, last year behind us and head into 2021. And, and in 2021, uh, here's what I want from us as a church. This is what I want from my life, from our life together. I, I want us to stink in 2021. I want us to stink. I want uh, the aroma of our life, the fragrance of our life. I-, I want us to stink in 2021. All through the scriptures, all through the scriptures, God uses the five senses. Uh, they, they help us remember things, the senses. They help us uh, engage in, in our surroundings. Uh, he, he commands us through the five senses uh, to see, to hear, to taste, to touch, to smell. He says things like, fix your eyes on Jesus. See, right, the author and perfecter of our faith. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Or Jesus will say to us, uh, hear these words I say to you and do them. Uh, Hear. Uh, We'll we'll hear things like taste and see that the Lord is good. Or uh, would your speech be seasoned with salt? Taste. Uh, touch, cling, hold to me and my teachings, Jesus will say. Uh, hold, touch, feel him, uh, embrace him. Uh, how are we to smell? The smell is the most uh, powerful of the senses. It captures our memories uh, like a vault. Uh, a smell, uh, it's that smell of Subway bread. I, I can smell it. I love that smell. That's the smell of grandma's pie that, that takes you right back to those Christmas meals and, and reminds you of the smell you didn't get to smell this year when you Zoomed with grandma for Christmas. Smell, it's the, the most powerful of the senses, the, uh, the olfactory sense, the, uh, the, the smell of our lives this year will be a guide for how to live in 2021. And we heard it in the passage that was just read for us. Thanks be to God who in Christ leads us in this triumphal procession. A smelly parade through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. I want us to look at this smelly parade, this triumphal procession this year. We'll look at the triumphal procession and and what it means because it probably means the exact opposite of what you and I thought it means. And then I want us to consider our own scent this year. What do we smell like? So we'll look at the triumphal procession and and see what this smell of parade is all about. And then we'll consider our own scent in 2021. Because it will be a great guide and comfort and impact all of eternity if we smell this way in the coming year. So Paul is uh, describing uh, the smelly parade, and he's uh, in 2 Corinthians, and he's saying, uh, when I came to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was open for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest. Why? Because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. Now a little context is going to help us with this scent this year. Uh, First and 2 Corinthians is written by Paul to the church in Corinth, Uh, It's a church he helped found. We can read about it in the book of Acts. And uh, he and Titus and and Timothy are all involved in the work there. And and here we read that uh, Paul is uh, going to Troas uh, right near Corinth. And he he sees God doing an amazing work. But again, his plans are foiled. He doesn't see Titus there. And he's like, man, my my plans keep falling through. And and so he writes this letter uh, to the church of Corinth. This is probably the fourth of the letters that he writes to this church in Corinth. He's written a letter previous to 1 Corinthians, then he writes a letter, uh, 1 Corinthians, that's his second letter, and then he writes another letter right before 2 Corinthians, and then he writes 2 Corinthians. So this is probably the fourth time he's written to this church, and, and why is he writing so many times? Because they're in turmoil, like all churches are. <laughs> They're in turmoil, and what's occurred is these super apostles, these counterfeit apostles, these these people have come in, and they're preaching a different message than the message of the crucified Savior that Paul was teaching. Uh, They're teaching a counterfeit Christianity. These super apostles are saying things like, man, you should have health, wealth, life to the fullest, the best right now. You should be healthy. You should be rich. You should uh, just uh, enjoy your sexuality in any way you want. You should have it all now. It should be amazing. Your life shouldn't look anything like Paul's. 
Paul's plans keep falling apart. Paul's life, man, look at this guy. He's always suffering. This, this is not Christianity. There's this real Christianity these super apostles are preaching where health, wealth, life, prosperity, now it should be yours. So Paul over and over again writes a letter, writes another letter, writes another letter, and now writes 2 Corinthians. To say, let me tell you how you should smell. Let me tell you what life should look like, smell like, the aroma you should put off. Thanks be to God, he says. But thanks be to God. Contrast, even though my plans fell apart. Can you relate? (laughs) But even though that happened, thanks be to God. Why? Why? In Christ, he always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. Because he is leading us in a triumphal procession. And now this is one of my favorite texts. I I thought I knew it well. And and as I was praying through, what do we preach as we go from, man, this horrific year into another and a new year? Uh, What do we we need to hear from the Lord? And and here's what I thought we needed to hear. Rah, rah, rah. God is leading us in triumphal procession, and I'm picturing the, the text in my mind. We are these conquering soldiers with God, and we're like, woohoo! Yeah, we're going into 2021 strong because He's the King. We win! Now, I, I'm thinking of a text that much like the, the super apostles, the counterfeit apostles would have preached this, this, this counterfeit Christianity that maybe you were sold. That said, it's going to be awesome. You're going to have health, wealth, life, prosperity now by power, by strength. You can take it. Claim it as yours. And I'm picturing us all going in together into 2021 with a rah, rah, rah. I was looking for a rah-rah text, and what I found is a Christian text. I got into studying the text deeply, and, and God reshaped the way I think about this passage. Might he reshape the way we smell and the way we think about this passage in our lives in 2021. See, the word here, triumphal procession, it's a, it's a Greek word, uh, thriambeo. Uh, uh, thriambeo. You can say it with me if you want. Thriambeo. It, it's this word to lead in triumphal procession. It's the participle Paul is using here. And, and it's this, here's the idea. This thriambeo, it, this is a Roman victory march where the returning general who has won the war comes back to his hometown. And what's he doing? He's got all the prisoners all those who's he's, who he's conquered in this march. And he's leading them into the city. See, see, in the picture here, God is leading this triumphal procession of his prisoners, of those he has conquered, of his subjects. And this is not us as these celebrating soldiers. woo Here we come. This is us as his prisoners, as his subjects, as those who have been conquered by the crucified Christ. Marching into this city. One scholar puts it this way in the Pillar New Testament commentary. He says, Thriambeo. This is Paul's thanksgiving. It's, It's one of faith and of hope. Contrary to the outward appearance and contrary to human reason. God always leads his followers to death as a captive in triumph. (laughs) This is clearly the meaning of the word thriambeo in this context. The term is drawn from the Roman custom of celebrating the triumph of a general in battle by allowing him to lead the captives before his chariot in an elaborate public procession through the city. This ritual concluded not only the burn, in the burning of incense along the way, but the sacrificial offering of bowls. And finally, in tradition and memory and in practice, the execution of the captives, <laughs> or at least the most prominent among them. 
The father of Christ is thus led in shame and death as was his or her crucified Lord. The shame and open humiliation of the victims of the triumph was well known and abhorred for some suicide was preferable. See, the the verb, it's not used to uh, capture uh, the victorious troops, but the defeated prisoners. But the defeated prisoners who now belong to the general, to the king, to the ruler who marches them through the city. And I love this scholar's question. I think it's a poignant one for us as we head into 2021. The question is whether the Corinthians or the Silver Springers or those here at the well have understood and grasped salvation given them in the gospel and portrayed for them in this apostle Paul or whether we have unwittingly substituted it for a cheap and false promise of earthly power and pleasure. Thrium Baal, the triumphal procession in Christ. It's the victory march of our captain. I see the first thing we need to think about as we head into in this victory march uh, of 2021 is that uh, this life is not about us. Uh, This life doesn't belong to me to write the script that I want written to have uh, health, wealth, power, perfect life now, comfort, joy, everything now. This life uh, is led by my king, my captor, the one who owns me. I belong to him. And he will use last year and this year for his purposes. And they are eternal purposes. In which he will what? He will spread the fragrance, the knowledge of him everywhere. In this triumphal procession, he will spread the fragrance and the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. See, we do not belong to ourselves, but we are being expended, burned up, poured out, spent out for for the very purposes of God to change all of eternity. To change all of eternity. This is the aroma of Christ, the fragrance of the knowledge of God. Uh, See, uh, everyone here, uh, as they're listening to this this triumphal march, this Roman procession, uh, all knows the incense smell that's, that's kind of uh, going into their nostrils, covering their clothes. They, they also know that there's this incense being uh, spread throughout this march, but there's this burning of bulls and sacrifices. There's this idea of incense being burned and going out, and this idea of sacrifice being made and going up to God and out to his people. And Paul uses this language all through his life as he's talking about his life of being marched in the triumphal procession of Christ, uh, being expended for God's purposes. He'll, he'll say things like, I am being poured out like a drink offering. I'm an offering to my God. I'm being poured out for your sake. I'm being expended for you for eternal purposes. He'll say, I'm being burnt up, and and my body is a living sacrifice, uh, being burnt up like a ram or a bull or a dove, going up to God uh, because I belong to him. I am burnt up for him, and, and you smell my aroma. Or I'll gladly spend myself. I'll be spent out for you, emptied so that you can become full. It's how Paul talks about his life. Burned up, poured out, spent It's the smelly scent of submission to his king. Why? Because eternity is at stake. God is doing something not to give me or you comfort or or, or health and wealth now, but he is doing something to rescue the souls of men and women. He is doing something to, to bring the scent of Christ to those who are perishing. That it would be the stench of death that might be like smelling salt to wake them up. But to the perishing, they smell this stench of death in your life as you live in submission to the God that they don't even believe exists. 
As, as you and I live in submission to Christ, our King who was crucified, and we, we have our lives crucified, poured out, burnt up, spent out for them. And they say, I don't even believe that God exists. I don't believe in his Savior, in his death to death of the perishing. But, but to those who are saved... <laughs> Our lives, as we live in smelly submission to Christ, to our, our Savior, we live in the pattern of Christ, our Savior, this crucified uh, form of life as we give our lives away for others uh, because of how our Savior has given his life away for us. They smell life to life. They say, uh, that person is submitted to the Savior, and they cling to him, and it's life to life for them. It's, it's not about if you get a $2,000 or $600 stimulus check this week. It, it is about the eternal purposes of God to rescue his people through us. You're being burned up, poured out, spent so that eternity can be changed. That God could spread through you or me the message of the crucified Savior through our crucified lives. I don't know if you saw the COVID stats or you're tracking them. You probably are. I, I am. Everyone's watching them. Uh, these are stats from the end of last week. The United States has confirmed 188,482 new COVID cases Wednesday. Per the Johns Hopkins COVID dashboard, 12% uh, have come back positive. A total of 3,715 deaths were attributed to the virus on Wednesday bringing the pandemic's American death toll to 342,259. 125,220 Americans are currently hospitalized with the disease. 2.794 Americans have received the vaccine. We're watching the numbers, aren't we? It's critical. It's critical that we distance ourselves. We put on masks. We, we, we've done things. We, we have changed our lives radically because people are dying uh, because of this disease. We, we have canceled Christmas vacations, right? We, we didn't go see our grandparents or get together uh, with families. We, uh, we have uh, stayed home from work. We've become uh, not just mom and dad, but teacher at home and, 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 co and co-workers in these uh, confined spaces in our home. We, we changed everything because people are dying. And we should. But we live so blasé, so nonchalant as our neighbors, our coworkers, and our friends are dying having never heard the gospel of Christ. As you and I pull in and out of work or go up and down in our condo complexes, right past people who are perishing without the salvific knowledge of Christ. How mad, how mad were you when you heard that Trump had lied about the grave situation we were in? How mad were you? It's like, how could you say this is no big deal, right? When you knew it was a huge deal. And when just a few had died in America, and, and, and we, we weren't really aware of the pervasive spreading of this pandemic. And how, how dare you lie about the grave situation, we said, and we were justifiably angry. But then we live our lives in such a lie of the salvific, the, the eternal damnation, the death that our friends, our family members, our coworkers are facing. And we put on the deodorant of tolerance and conformity and we, we sit back silently and we don't speak of the one who can bring salvation. We don't smell up the life. We, we don't want to shake any bushes. We don't want to uh, uh, break the status quo. And we so often live this just foolish lie. Pursuing just our best Christianity, best life now. I just got to be comfortable. I got to be happy. I got to get the right house. Got to get the right job. That's what I'll live for. While people perish around us. And they're sniffing us out too. They're sniffing us out. This, this family friend, who's, who's, they've really become family. They, um, 
their son became good friends with our son and daughters and so on, and, and they kind of got a front row to our, our, our life, right? And, uh, and they smelled the good and the bad, right? Uh, uh, we had lots of game nights together. They would eat lots of dinners over at our place and, and vice versa. We would hang out a lot and sit by the fire pit, talk life. Uh, he heard me apologize for different things I'd said or done, and, 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 and I heard junk in his life and vice versa, and, and we just kind of shared life and the smelliness of it all. And, and, and this year, he said to me just the most amazing words I'd ever heard. He, he just said, Matt, uh, Jesus Christ is my Savior. And then uh, he paid me one of the, just the greatest compliments of my entire life. And I, I'm, humbled, uh, I'm humbled by it to this day. And, and uh, he said, you know, Matt, we, we've been watching your life. We've been, in a sense, sniffing you out. <laughs> And we've seen how you guys and your family live. And it's not all perfect. And then you've seen, we've seen the nastiness, the good, the good parts. We, we, we've seen you take your decisions uh, to God to seek guidance. We, we've, we've heard you apologize. We've heard you ask for uh, advice and guidance. We, we, we've lived life together. And we've seen that y- you, are, you guys are submitted to Christ. And he didn't use those exact words, but that, that's what he's after. Now, I'm convinced that God was, uh, was having him look uh, through Holy Spirit lenses at our life, right? And, and seeing things uh, in certain ways by the grace of God that, that, that we might become smelling salt to a dying soul. And you know, what had happened in his life, they, they had these, uh, this set of parents who had lived this kind of hypocritical life as Christians before them. And it, and it left this bad taste in their mouth, this bad stench in their nostrils, and they just thought... How could that be who Jesus is or what he lives like? People are smelling us out. When they hear you go to church, they're going to start sniffing at your life to see, are you submitted to the king? Do you live a life like Jesus? Do you, do you live a kind of life that, that I want to live and with a kind of savior that I want to have? And to some, it'll be the stench of death, and they will reject the Savior. And then some, Jesus, he'll open their eyes, <laughs> and there will be salvation. And what we will realize in our dependence on Christ, our submission to him, is that he is spreading through us the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus, the crucified Savior who brings life and eternal transformation now and forever. Who is sufficient for these things, Paul says? Who, who's sufficient? It says in verse 16, who, who could be sufficient for this kind of thing? And Paul is referencing these super apostles. Is it, is it them who, who say, uh, get your best life now, it's going to be comfort and joy and, and health and wealth? Or, or is it us, us apostles who are, who are living and following Christ in the cruciform kind of way? He's, he's kind of implying, well, no one is sufficient. It's not them. They're, they're not sufficient because then here's what he said. For we are not like many peddlers of God's word. We're not making up this counterfeit uh, best life now kind of Christianity. But as men and women of sincerity, we've been commissioned by God. God. In the sight of God, we speak in Christ. We are in Christ. He is the sufficient one. We speak of him, the one who has submitted his whole life to the Father, the one who is walking with us in this triumphal procession as a prisoner all the way to his cross where he was crucified. He is the sufficient one. He is the one we want to smell like and speak of. So, so what does that mean, the smell of Christ, this aroma of Christ, as we consider our own scent? What is it? What, what is it to smell like Jesus? <laughs> it's smelly submission. It's smelly submission in every aspect of our lives. Uh, the scriptures will summarize this kind of life, the Christian life, the smelly life like this. In Luke chapter 9. Jesus is talking to his uh, followers early on, and he says, you want to know what life like, uh, is like following me? He says uh, to all of them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Give it all up. <laughs> you don't belong to yourself, you belong to him. The path he's called you on, he's marching you in now. Would, would you live it in, in sacrificial submission to Christ? 
Uh, Paul will summarize his life like this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified in Christ. I no longer live. I've been crucified, dead, done. My life is not mine. It doesn't belong to me, but now I live it in Christ for him. Every decision I make, every plan I make, it, it is led by my Savior, the one who is crucified and owns me now. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, this is the, the, the choice you and I have every day. In light of God's mercy, because of how merciful, gracious he's been to us, crucifying his own son in our place, what ought we to do? Offer our bodies as living sacrifices, burned up, poured out, spent for Christ, and a fragrant aroma to those around us who are either perishing or being saved, that they might cling to him too. This is our choice in view of God's mercy. Offer our bodies as living sacrifices. But Paul's life, it's going to put a lot of flesh on this scent. It's going to uh, kind of uh, show us what this looks like. As we think about leaving 2020 and stepping into 2021, uh, Paul does this sort of reflection. Maybe you've done some kind of year-end reflections. He, he looks back on his life and, and the scent of his life, the triumphal procession that God has led him on. <laughs> And he looks back at it as he's writing the Corinthians, and he talks about his reflection uh, back on this triumphal procession in Christ, the, his life, his 2021. And he looks at it, and he talks about it like this. <laughs> this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 and following. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Because it was thought that 40 lashes would ki kill you. So, so five times he got 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in, in, in cold and in exposure. That sounds like an awesome year. Now looking back, and we say, what do I take away from that as I head into 2020? And, and Paul says, here's my takeaways. Here's my takeaways. He says, first, I am dependent on Christ. As, as I'm in smelly submission to him, I realize I am fully dependent on him. I want to live like him. I want to be dependent on him, whether I get this kind of check or that kind of check, whether I have a job or don't have a job. Whatever my life held, I want to be fully dependent on him. He says it like this. Jesus looks at him and says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. For the sake of Christ, I'm content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I'm being poured out, burnt up, spent for Christ and for you. And when I feel the weakest, when I don't have what it takes, I, I find that and when I'm dependent on Jesus... He is so strong. He is so sturdy. He is so faithful. He may be marching me as a prisoner, as one he's conquered, but he is marching me. He is my strength. He is the victor. His takeaway number two, he summarizes it like this down in verse 15 of chapter 12. And I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls. I'll very gladly be spent and spent for your souls. Dependent on Christ and aware of eternity and God's eternal purposes. Fully dependent on Christ who is sufficient and fully aware of eternity that is being changed around us. It used to be that uh, the architecture of the Christian building, the place of worship, it meant a lot. And cathedrals were built like a giant cross. As a weekly reminder, as you would step into worship, you are stepping in uh, to live like 
your Savior Jesus who was crucified on a cross. That, that as you were stepping into the presence of God, the, the only way you could step in was because he had crucified his own son so you could be his son or daughter. Every week you would step into this cross-shaped cathedral to remember that we are dependent on the one who is crucified and we live like the one who is crucified. Then we, we would step out of that cathedral, that cross-shaped cathedral to be burned up, to be spilled out, to be spent uh, for those who, who don't yet know the Son, don't yet have the salvation of the one crucified for them, stinking up the world for eternal purposes. That verbs like this would capture our life. Bend, pivot. I thought I had a plan to do this or have that great thing, but God had a different plan, and I bend or pivot or submit to him. To serve, uh, that, that we're not uh, gaining for ourselves or accruing or, or keeping all things for me or hoarding, but, but we, we serve, we spend everything we have for the good of others, that these kinds of verbs would capture our life, that we, that we pause, that we sit before him, that we listen that we allow him to direct our lives. That we thank. That we say, I- I'm not sufficient for this on my own, but you have given so graciously. We thank. We pray. We apologize. These are verbs of a servant. One in smelly submission. Summarized in the scripture, seen in Paul's life. Dependent on Jesus, aware of eternity. And I just want to say, way to go, church. <laughs> way to go, church, in this year. I think of teachers in our church. I have heard uh, from many teachers of the, as they've gone through this year, and, and they didn't expect to live it on their computers. They didn't expect to go into Zoom day in and day out, but they pivoted, and they've worked with excellence for their Savior, Jesus. They, they have done their best to bring education to kids, and, and they have uh, cared for kids when often uh, parents weren't even able to be home when they're educating their kids uh, at home, and, and they've cared for kids. And, and some teachers have even taken the opportunity to share with kids, with with, with coworkers, with parents, with staff to say, this is where my strength is coming from this year. I, I'm messing up, right? I don't have everything that it takes, but, but my Savior is showing himself sufficient and, and talking about Jesus and how he's carrying through this year uh, our teachers. Or our silent servants. Man, way to go silent servants in our church. We're just giving their lives away and helping the well to give our lives away for the good of those who everyone else overlooks. Corinne. Way to go. Corinne, you, you have uh, gathered gift cards from the church. You've taken meals to families who are in great need uh, at Georgian Forest. You, you've prayed with the counselor there. You, you, you purchased uh, uh, 25 Jesus Storybook Bibles written in Spanish to hand out uh, to families there. You, you are serving silently, and, and the church is serving along with you. Way to go. You're, you're a smelly servant. <laughs> Way to go, Jeannie and Kevin. Way to go. You had, you had uh, your second biological kid this year, and they're all really young. And, and we got to go over to your house, and it, it's chaos, right? Like, it's chaos. You got three, three and under because uh, your uh, one-year-old foster child is with you, too. And you're praying for him, and you're caring for him day in and day out. And no one sees every minute of the way that you're expending yourself for his life. And no one knows the way that man, you're praying that, 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 that God would do the best in his life, even if the best is to return him uh, to his uh, biological parents. And you're, you're frightened in that, but you're, you're, you're open to God's plan. God, this is how we want it to go, but, but God, we trust you. We belong to you. Would you do the best uh, for our little son in this moment? And way to go, Danielle and others who are, who are mobilizing the body to care for vulnerable children, collecting goods, collecting money, caring for, bringing hats and gloves, and, and, and supporting families who are caring for those uh, who are without parents in this time. Way to go. Smelly servants, way to go. Bernard and your community group, way to go. 
You're, you're serving the homeless, Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless. And, and even when they're like, hey, you can't share anything about Jesus. You say, great, we just want to serve. We just want to expend ourselves uh, for these folks. And, and you did. And then they said, hey, but actually you can pray. You, you can pray and you can sing carols about who Jesus is too. And so you did and, and you cared for. You brought food and you brought the good news of Jesus. Man, way to go, your community group up there and others who are joining in the work and the financing of these projects. Way to go. Moms and dads, way to go. You are changing eternity as you disciple your kids, and no one sees. <laughs> no one sees except your king, your captor, who's leading you in triumphal procession. He sees, he looks, he says, way to go in smelly submission to me. Way to go. It is so imperative that we live the eternal and the mundane in a smelly way this year because as a church in a countrywide way looks at our church, the church at large, they're, they're smelling things that, that are really disgusting. And they're smelling out the church, and they're smelling things uh, politically, and they, they, they are appalled that, that the church has been so aligned uh, with like this Christian Trumpism. And, and, and I would just say, uh, if you have uh, a chance to read this week, uh, Michael Horton wrote an amazing article. Uh, called the cult of Christian Trumpism because uh, the, the, the country is smelling the church and saying, how could you align with someone who lives this way or says these kinds of things? And, 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 and as they're smelling in this kind of uh, overarching way, might we live a different scent day in and day out in the mundane and the local and the way we serve selflessly and, and seek apology and care and give ourselves away selflessly for those around us, those People are smelling us out. Or but when it comes to the reaction to racism and inequality and injustice in our country, what they're smelling is, is a church that's so quick to criticize uh, critical race theory or intersectionality rather than to learn and grow and listen and say, man, what can we learn from what our brothers and sisters uh, are saying in the church and outside of the church about how we live as white America? What can we learn? And in local ways, would we bring a different scent in our neighborhoods, with our coworkers, with our friends? Would we bring a scent of listening, humility, learning, growing together? COVID, we're smelling in a nationwide level. Christians, all they want, hey, give us our freedom. We got to gather guns, freedom, Christianity. That's what they hear. That's what they smell. Would we in a local way smell so differently? Man, it is imperative that we gather uh, both in person, safely, and, and online to worship and in all our different forms as a church. But would we smell like humility? Would we smell like our crucified Savior as we follow him? People are sniffing us out, and eternity is at stake. So as we march into 2021 as Christ's captives, will we march in dependent and aware of eternity? There is great strength. There is great resilience is the buzzword going around these days in this kind of march. Listen to the words that Paul talks about as he shares of this life of humble dependence of being poured out, burnt up, spent for others just like his Savior was. He says it like this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay. Why? To show the surpassing power that belongs to God and not us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. So that the life of Jesus also might be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you as you see the crucified Savior who is risen and will one day make all things new and give us what we long for, a, a perfect life with Him forever. We live a dependent life 
like Christ and on Christ, we live a life aware of eternity that is being shaped through our crucified lives like our crucified Savior. And no matter what you look back on in 2021, you'd be dependent on Jesus and aware of eternity. We, we do this thing every year. We, we take out these rocks. We, we, uh, we've written on each rock just a different thing of God's grace. And, and uh, you know, we got, we got Jillian's rock here. This was from the hospital where Jillian was born. Oh, my first job uh, at Northwest Bible Church as a pastor there. And then we got all these different rocks. And this year we wrote uh, COVID on a rock. And we were talking to the kids. We were reflecting back. And we said, what was great about COVID? And they're like, nothing. It's terrible. <laughs> they're right, you know, to some extent. And, and then uh, my daughter Eden spoke up and she said, uh, oh, but this year, remember Mr. J came and trusted in Jesus. He, he, he came to salvation. And, and Eden also said, I got baptized too, right? Marked as one who belongs to Jesus. And I looked back and, and reflected on God's grace that even though things are not gone the way that we, man, we wanted them to go. We, we didn't have our best life now. That, that God was working his eternal purposes. And I was struck with it, man. And I wrote that same guy who, man, paid that amazing, just uh, humbling compliment. And I wrote him and I said this. John, I was reflecting on 2020. What a terrible year. But then I thought of the evening you shared explicitly that Jesus was your Savior. Bro, there are few greater joys. God has given you life in Christ. And it's one of the great joys of my life to see the way he is so actively working your life today. I'm thankful for our friendship, for our family, and the great grace of our God and Savior to rescue fools like us from our self-directed lives and out of the mire of this broken world. I'm so thankful to be following Jesus along with you, brother. Terrible year it was, but a mighty Savior we have. Let's spend a little bit of time in prayer as we think back on not just this past year, but on our crucified Savior, whose body was broken, his blood was spilled, to make you and to make me as sons and daughters. He was poured out. He was burnt out. He gave his whole life for you and for me. And we'll walk into 2021 in triumphal procession, belonging to Jesus dependent on him, living like him, and aware of his eternal purposes to rescue souls of men and women around us. I'll lead us in prayer as we think back and look forward. Father, as we look back on this past year, uh, with hands out and open, we submit to you things that did not go our way. And we ask you now to meet us in those things. To shape us in new dependence, new Christ-likeness, a new cruciformed, cross-shaped life. God, we talk to you about those things now. And we ask that you would shape us in a new dependence on your son right now. Father, as we look back at 2020 and we look forward to 2021, would you make us mindful of eternity? Would you open our eyes to those who are perishing around us without your son, Jesus? We have neighbors, co-workers, friends, family who don't know you, don't know that you sacrificed, you crucified your son that they might have life in him. 
And God, there might even be a person now who is listening that does not yet realize that, that you sacrificed your son, that they could become your son or your daughter this morning. God, would you open their eyes right now to realize that the, the price you paid to make them yours. We pray now, Father, to you for those by name that don't yet know you, that they would, would find salvation, they would cling to your son. We pray by name for them now. Father, we do not buy into some counterfeit, cheap Christianity which costs us nothing. We see your son and it cost him everything. He was crucified in our place, paying the wage, the penalty for our sin. He rose to life three days later to give us the strength, the life, the fortitude, the resilience to depend fully on Him, not ourselves, in whatever circumstance in life you have dealt us. God, would you make us dependent on Christ? Would you help us to live like Christ? Would we pour ourselves out, burn ourselves up, spend ourselves for your sake, Father, and the sake of others? Would it be a great joy of our life to see you change eternity through us with the smell of our life and smelly submission and strong souls in you dependent on Christ? Would you rescue people through the scent of our lives? God, we are so grateful for your Savior who's given us life who's made us his prisoners, his captives, marched us into 2021 in triumphal victory. You have taken things which, which Satan had planned for evil and you're redeeming them for good, for your eternal purposes. Satan thought he was winning when your son went to the cross, but God, you win. In your resurrection, you've given us life now and forever. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you're trusting in Christ, would you celebrate what the crucified Savior has done for you, his body broken, his blood spilled, to march you in his triumphal procession in Christ this coming year.